In its heyday, Wisconsin was at the forefront of the nation's paper industry, with some 30,000 jobs in the mills alone at its peak. And through innovation like renewable forests and coated paper, the industry so far has survived economic downturns. Until now. Production has fallen like a rock. Mills are shrinking and closing at alarming rates. But why? Over the course of the last decade, China tripled its paper production and in 2009 overtook the United States as the world's biggest paper maker. But China's advantage doesn't start in the forest. It starts in a lab. At Asia Pulp and Paper Company's temperature-controlled laboratory in Hainan, the most tropical province in China, tiny green samples implanted in petri jars are cloned to provide trees that grow very quickly. We make hybrids. Wending Wang, Asia Pulp and Paper's chief forester in China, calls them his Yao Mings, playfully named after the towering Chinese basketball star. Uh, for a hybrid trial, we select the super, super tree. It's a, it's a very, very tall. You see this plantation is a eucalyptus. Yeah, we always call it like Yao Ming. In a short amount of time, the hardwood eucalyptus trees reach a full height of up to 90 feet or more. We use the, 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 the tissue culture technology. First, we take the tissue from these uh, shoot trees, and in the, in the tissue lab, we make this uh, use of very small tissue. We into the bottle and make and, uh, and more and more. And then after the about uh, 25 centimeters tall, and uh, we transplant it to the field. A typical tree growing in the United States takes 40 to 60 years to harvest for paper making. But in China, Thanks to the climate and the advanced technology that starts in the lab, a tree is ready in only four to six years, 10 times as fast as in the United States. China's also been building massive mills with automated machines that can produce nearly a mile of glossy publishing grade paper every minute. The Hainan paper machine number two at Asia Pulp and Papers Mill in Hainan Province, covers the length of four and a half football fields. It's more than double the size of the largest mill in Wisconsin. People have this image of China with these old factories, with these outdated processes, you know, full of pollution, all you know, falling apart and barely hanging on. It's completely the opposite. It is very brand new, very cutting edge. Even with its proliferation of industry-scale plantations, China still imports the vast majority of wood and processed pulp from around the world. The facility imports so much virgin pulp that APP operates its own shipping ports for regular shipments. The country imported 14.5 million tons of pulp last year alone from places like Russia, Indonesia, and Vietnam as well as the United States, including Wisconsin, where every mill closure means one less customer for pulping operations. China's ascent in paper production is partnered with environmental groups and paper industry leaders in the United States, crying foul over the way it handles its forest lands. When I, when I look at the, the global competition, I recognize it. What I don't like is sometimes they don't think, do things like we do. Butch Johnson owns the Flambeau River Papers Mill in Park Falls, Wisconsin. He made the bold move to reopen the mill after it closed in 2006, saving some 300 jobs in the community. While Johnson understands global competition is inevitable, 
He feels the lack of regulation is a concern. We talk, they don't have an EPA and a DNR to sit there and uh, help assure the public that we're doing things properly. So I brought Democrats and Republicans together to put sanctions on China now. Wisconsin politicians join in, blaming China for unfairly subsidizing its mills and putting homegrown operations out of business by shipping back lower cost paper. In Wisconsin, we lead the entire nation in paper industry jobs. But China, they lead the world in cheating. And it's costing us jobs in Wisconsin. So I brought And with its 20 modern mega mills spread across China, Asia Pulp and Paper has been at the center of accusations of below market pricing, unfair subsidies, and clear cutting of rainforests. A claim the company has heard before and feels is false. The West, though, has this perception that, that what's happening in China is a bunch, bunch of crazy Asians with chainsaws running around stripping down their forest, and it's, and it's just not true. Jeff Lindsay is a 20-year veteran of Wisconsin's paper industry who was recruited by APP in 2011 to run its growing portfolio of patents. He now works in APP's Shanghai headquarters. In China, the government of China, the people of China, they care about the environment. There's a lot of room for progress, but there has been remarkable progress in the past few years. They have very high standards, very high regulations. No, and you talk about sustainability, um, I don't think the Chinese worry about that too much. APP also responds this way to accusations of illegal importation of timber harvested from rainforests. We have to meet standards and regulations as, as strict as anybody in Wisconsin. Uh, we have, you, you don't know regulations until you see Chinese regulations. Uh, the paperwork for planting a tree in this country is, you would not even believe it from a U.S. perspective. Uh, the paperwork here in, an organ in a country where basically everything is decided by the state, there's much more regulation. Lindsay looks to the West's lack of ingenuity and innovation as a reason for its struggles. The climate is a, is a big deal where we can grow tall, beautiful, fiber-rich trees in five to six year cycles. And we're, 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 we're innovating. Part of our innovation is coming up with ways to do that even faster. That is actually, if you care about sustainability, that's good news. That means you can take a plot of land and get five to six times more productivity out of it. And people ought to be welcoming that as good news for the sustainability story. Instead, somehow, it gets finger, becomes finger pointing and let's shut those people down. While that innovation slows in the US, it accelerates in China. Voigt is one of the few manufacturers that build entire paper machines. Its Chinese factory in Kunshan is as big as a mid-sized college campus and getting larger to accommodate China's paper manufacturing growth. For every 12 paper machines Voigt builds, nine go to China, three to Europe, and zero to the United States. Ming Ming Lu, Voigt's chief executive for Asian markets, explains, that China's modern paper machines can make three times as much paper with the same amount of energy as many of the older machines still in use in the U.S. No machine in America, because America do not make the investment for today's technology. That's the problem. They have only machines, outdated machine. But will investment alone be enough to level the playing field with China? With its super modern mills, its scientifically advanced tree plantations, and its billions of dollars in government subsidies. Butch did correctly mention that we do have world-class technology. We have the new, new machines and a lot of money invested in this technology. And it's really going to be down to who has the most innovation, who has the best technology. I hope that uh, Wisconsin will continue innovating so that the difference in climate and the raw materials cost does not become the determining factor. Invest in new, uh, in new equipment, new processes, come up with new products, new coatings, new technology. Keep the innovation engines going and the raw materials cost won't be such a big deal anymore. <laughs>